Hello, this is a Cynic Dram, and today is July 20th, 2022, and I'm giving my DJI Pocket 2 a another go recording this video. Um, I lowered the quality, so I, hopefully this will actually save the entire vlog in one file instead of six files. And because uh, I did that the other day, I recorded like a 28 minute <laughs> video and I end up getting like six, two minute, six, eight, six or eight, two minute video blocks. And I was like, I don't know how to edit that stuff, so I didn't do it. Okay, uh, well, today was the completion of day three of intermediate fasting, of the 16 8 intermediate fasting. It went better than yesterday, so uh, I made it no problem through um, 9 a.m. last, well, 9 p.m. last night to 1 uh, p.m. today. Um, those who saw my video last night saw that I did do a minor cheat with two cups of Jello at 20 calories each. But hey, it didn't really. I don't think it affected anything. But uh, tonight, um, I started my fast at 8:45, uh, so 8:45, 8:50-ish. So uh, anyway. That will be going on until tomorrow at 1 p.m. And I'll have my first uh, keto chow shake. And then I'll have my second at 4 o'clock. So, like I said, it's going pretty good. Um, the, uh, the uh, what was I going to say, is that I, I might get menu fatigue from the shakes, I think, uh, fairly quickly. And I think I'm going to stop using almond milk. I'm just going to go to water, I think. And use a, uh, you know, because I think that the uh, almond milk might be a little too much uh, for me. Um, usually, almond milk doesn't affect me that much, but you know, I've been drinking a, a lot more almond milk with these shakes than normal. So, uh, if you see me looking over here, it's because I have my phone right here as my uh, as my screen, because uh, on this DJI Pocket too. The screen is literally a half inch by half inch, and I can't, I can't see very well. Um, so uh, anyway, what else? What's going on? Um, uh, oh, um, yeah. So not much with that. But uh, what's funny is today, this afternoon, um, I was leaving work, and uh, there's this gentleman who uh, was leaving. He he was looking a little frantic. He um, was he was out at his car and he came he, was, he came into the building in a hurry and he went upstairs and uh, he told the security guard he let, locked his keys in the car so he went upstairs or he lost his keys actually and so um, he was looking for his keys you know from earlier in the morning you know retracing his steps from the path for the parking lot to the building couldn't find them and he thinks that they were locked in his car so. Uh, luckily, he well, he thought ahead and he uh, put a spare key in his desk. So he went up to his desk and got a spare key on his way out. I was sitting uh, on uh, the brick wall, just you know, resting. Um, I don't think I need to rest much anymore when I walk, but you know, since I'm a larger dude, uh, you know, I get I get tired. Well, not really tired. It's like my back hurts. So and. Uh, and, but the good news is it's you know I can walk extended distances better now, so um, so anyway I was taking a a quick break on a on a wall they have there, and he 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 came up to me and we started talking he introduced himself to me and uh, we started we chatted for about a half hour or so it was actually really nice he uh, he told me he has a goal um, he came from the Midwest uh, I didn't tell him I'm from Iowa but uh, he's from like Wisconsin area. You could tell from his accent. <laughs> it's kind of cool when uh, the business I'm the the business I'm in. Um, I like accents. Uh, I like hearing accents, and I like you know hearing people talk and guessing where they're from. Uh, being being in customer service for the last twenty years or so, I was in uh, a call center, uh, you know, taking service calls and supply calls for about eight months, and uh, you heard every voice every you know every um accent from the u.s from maine to you know to san diego all the way up to washington you heard every every accent 
and uh, uh, device is disconnected, but that's okay. I'm just, just going to finish the disconnect here, and I'll just go off of the little mini screen here. And uh, just let me turn off my phone. Sorry, guys. All right, cool. Um, all right, yeah, so you hear, you have different, you know, you can hear, you, you know, you hear different accents. Um, a lot of our employee is, employees are, you know, diverse. We have a lot of foreigners, and it's great to hear all the different accents. And, uh, but anyway, so we were talking, and uh, he was telling me he had, uh, he's just moved here to Ramsey uh, campus two months ago, and he doesn't really know anybody. And so what he's been doing is uh, he has a goal uh, during the week to introduce himself to three new people. And so he was, uh, I was just sitting out there just, you know, you know, resting up, and he introduced himself to me. We talked, and he says, I was the fourth person he, uh, he met uh, this week. So it was kind of cool. And um, I actually kind of like that idea. It's, um, it's a good way to build a community, you know, for yourself and, you know, a culture for, you know, the comp you know, for a company or even for a community is um, having, you know, having the uh, ability and the uh, want to expand your network. And so I thought that was great. I thought it was a great idea. And, uh, and you know, we just started spitballing and talking and I was telling them about... Uh, I was talking about a little bit of my philosophy is about um, being positive um, and being, you know, showing, uh, you know, validating people in, um, and that way you can cut through ego and, uh, you know, get to the point, get to the uh, problem and be able to solve it uh, quicker and, you know, more efficiently and with uh, synergy. And uh, so it was kind of, it's funny because I was, um, I don't, I've, I've probably told the story, but I haven't, but I'll tell it again real quick and then I'll get back to my conversation with the dude. Um, anyway, so about eight years ago, I was pretty miserable in my job. It was pretty, it was fucking unbearable, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it was actually probably longer than that. It was probably eight, eight years ago. Yeah, eight years, nine years ago. It was just fucking miserable. Um, uh, we our call center our call volume was a lot higher uh, back then because uh, we weren't as proactive and but we had more people in our department we had like eight we had like six people six seven people in our department and all of us were you know pretty damn good we knew our jobs so this is the old crew in my uh, in uh, my department we solid teams but it was still miserable because phone calls just kept coming in coming in coming in and my reaction would always be what the fuck do you want? I didn't obviously didn't say that, but that was my. If you were on the other phone, that's what you heard. You didn't hear me say that the f word, but you heard from my attitude is like, don't fucking bother me. But so I had a my therapist uh, at the time uh, said to me, he goes, you know, you don't. Have, I mean, I, I I swear I probably told this. I told the story like four times uh, in the last few weeks, and I think I may have put it on a video, but. If I did, I, I did, but I'm still talking about it. It's my space. Um, anyway, so I talked to my uh, therapist, and she goes, well, what can you control? I said, well, when the technician calls in, he has to put his employee ID number in, and the name pops up. She goes, there you go. Just uh, when they call in, just say, hey, Ted. I, already, I think I did talk about this. And so anyway, I'll make it brief. And so I started doing that, and my attitude improved. And, uh, you know... I started getting you know better results with my job anyway I was telling him about that and I was telling him about the you know other things about you know we we're talking commiserating about how busy it is and how you know over you know how overworked we are and it seems like you know we're uh, you know being asked to do more with less and not really getting recognized for it and then I was telling him I said yeah that sucks but I said but the good thing is is that um, this gives you an opportunity to um, find efficiencies and find um, you know change your perspective and cha find another way to uh, solve a problem. Now, in my situation in my department, is that we're so understaffed and so undertrained. Um, it's rough to do. I mean, uh, when our department moved down to uh, from Connecticut to New Jersey. 
the management didn't allow our uh, Connecticut team to train the new hires, so they did not get the they did not get the um, true intent behind the department, and they were you doing the job from a forty thousand foot view, not the uh, front line nitty dirty you know front line uh, perspective, and. You know, because for me, it's like when I was in uh, Connecticut, we, whenever a problem happened, you, you sunk into it, you got it done, you got it fixed, and, um, you know, you got it done, and you knew what to, you know where to go. With this new group, it was, well, I don't know what to do. I'll, I'll help you with the best I can. I don't know really what to do. But, um, and then it kind of trails off in the end so that the technicians left in the lurch and but you know i'm not going to get in i'm not going to it's it's not their fault it's the it's management's fault for not training properly and not taking advantage of um a, a seasoned crew that could have handed the baton off in a more dignified you know in a more uh dignified and uh you know helpful way for the company but i don't blame the people in windsor not wanting to train either because they were getting fucked out of their jobs that they've had some have had for 35 years 40 years and they were getting they were getting, they were getting uh you know shit canned because of uh stupid political bullshit regarding taxes so i don't blame them i don't blame them for not wanting to you know like i said not wanting to go that extra mile to train uh I'm going to end I'm going to end this right now because for some reason Oh no, no, I'm not going to end it. I can't see. Oh, okay. I thought my uh, I thought the timer uh reset on me. It didn't. It's just the screen's just so small. The 12 looked like just a 2. Um anyway, so I don't blame them. Uh but anyway, getting further in the conversation, I was giving some of my philosophy about how um when you like my philosophy is like when you say good morning to a person you're not really saying good morning for the benefit of the person you're saying it to the benefit of saying good morning to somebody or saying hello to somebody is to benefit you your inner self um, because you are projecting a you know projecting a positive force and you're recognizing a person for who they are by saying good morning and like again you're not saying it for the benefit of that person it it turns out to be a benefit it, it turns out to be a benefit but the benefit of saying good morning and being polite and having good manners and actually you know being of service to people the benefits not for the other person the benefits for yourself um, meaning that it's a positive and the positive will grow inside you and the more the more uh positivity you can throw in the world not only does it make your day better or your life better and or my life better and uh you know my outlook on life better and uh it will rub off on not won't rub off on everybody but that that's bullshit people say you know you know uh, throw that smile in the world so everyone smiles that's bullshit you know people only people who have a those receptors open that are you know that receptors are open will pick up with it but you know anyway i i, I told about that philosophy and then and then uh and then i was telling them how you know it, the best thing to do is to validate people and then then go after then go after the business getting it get you know getting it, uh, re resolutions of you know problems or tasks and uh and I connected with him, and he took it, and he was like, he's like, wow, he goes, I didn't think about it. Then he told me about a problem, how he had today at work, and I, and I, about how he was neglecting his, um, his duties and helping a co-worker, and about how he felt guilty because he was not that much of a help with the co-worker, and also, uh, with him neglecting his responsibilities put a burden on his manager, and uh, he felt he felt bad about that. And I told him, I said, dude, I said, I've been in that situation several times when I've been with this company. And, um, and I said, you just can't let it bother you. You just, you know, you learn from it. And tomorrow you go in, you make sure you get your job done first. And if you have time left over, 
double check to make sure all your outstanding work is done and then offer assistance. I said there I said your your primary goal working is to ensure that you get your you get your allotment done first at the highest quality that you can provide um, because whoever it is is paying you and you need to give an honest effort in in the position me personally I can admit to you that I have not given an honest effort um, all the time in my in my job in my position but um, but I know the importance of it and I know better and I have been and I have been recently putting in an honest effort and extra honest effort into my job and and but I was telling him about that and then he he was like wow he goes wow that really he goes you really kind of inspired me by saying that I didn't think I was really saying anything you know profound or anything but I was just giving my point of view and he uh, he, he thanked me and he said it, it cheered him up and it made him uh, it actually made him uh, excited about coming into work tomorrow and you know putting some of the stuff I was saying to practice it's like I'm becoming a Tony Robbins guru or something but um, you know I mean I love talking about that stuff I love you know discussing that you know uh, tactics like that and uh, you know making you know making life easier for yourself and you know making it easier for everybody else um, I will talk about a problem I did have at work today uh, we have this we had this tax issue with uh, one of our vendors HP and uh, so anyway to make a long story short our cliff notes it um, it was back in February uh, there was a um, a glitch on the glitch or it was me making a mistake or another coworker making a mistake about um, not checking tax exempt it's not a big deal but it fell through it happened I took ownership of it and I uh, emailed everyone on the HP side and they told me what to do and I sent the email to KM's management, told them what they needed to do and no one did anything about it. They dropped the ball. They neglected to do it. So anyway, last week we had a Zoom meeting with HP and uh, it came up where the, H the tax thing came up. And then there was uh, an, an email that was sent out from HP that was recapping the, uh, the you know, the, the stuff that they were going to do to resolve um, ongoing billing issues with the company. Um, and in the email, that the recap email, they had a, they sent a screenshot of a Slack message. They use Slack for their, uh, communi uh, their internal communications over at HP. And they sent a screenshot of the Slack communication and it said that they were going to fix this problem. So uh, I get an IM today from a uh, from a from a person in a department, uh, not my department, but it's a related department. And they were basically harassing me again about this. And I asked them, I said, "Did you read the email?" I said, "Can't you just reply to the email?" I'm not of a position. I'm just an employee. I'm not a supervisor. I'm not a manager. I do not make policy. I cannot do anything. All I can do is make suggestions. And she goes, "Well, yeah, but we're asking you to do it." And I'm like, "Why can't you send your own fucking email? I'm not your secretary." Of course, I didn't say that. I wanted to, but I didn't say it. But so anyway, they they could have done this email themselves. Um, I start work at 11.30, and they could have done this email at 8 a.m., said it to HP, and they would have got it done. Um, guess what, though? I sent the email to HP, and I, I took a screenshot of the Slack message, that, which they should have never included in their email. I'll talk about that at a later date. I don't want to go too much longer on this video. But I sent a copy of their Slack message, the time-dated capture of their Slack message, and asked them, I said, hey, on the 15th at, you know, 3 p.m., you asked so-and-so to do this. I said, today's Wednesday the 20th. Have you accomplished this yet? And they go, oh, not yet, but we'll get it taken care of. Guess what? It was take I got my response in five minutes. So this was going, this issue was going on for four months. 